Hello and welcome back to our intro to ChatGPT course on Code Academy. We're in the introduction to generative AI section. This is introduction. Imagine having a tool that can write text, create pictures, or compose music for you. Generative AI is a tool that can do all of those things. In this lesson, we'll explore the basics of generative AI and how it's used in the popular tool ChatGPT. Generative AI refers to a type of artificial intelligence that is capable of creating new content based on its understanding of patterns and relationships in the data it's been trained on. It can generate content that resembles human-created work, making it a powerful tool for a wide range of applications. In the case of ChatGPT, generative AI is used to create text-based responses to user input. Generative AI is the core technology behind ChatGPT, enabling it to understand user input and generate human-like text responses to engage users in a reasonable conversation. Our instructions say press next to continue. Um, concept review does tell us that if we want to quickly review, there is this cheat sheet. Let's go ahead and press next. Training data. Generative AI is amazing at learning. AI doesn't learn the same way humans do. It analyzes data and creates connections using math. The connections it makes depend on the sort of data the AI is given. Is it good data? Is it enough data? In order to create connections, it needs lots of good quality data. We call this data training data. Training data can be anything from text, to images, to websites. It depends what sort of final output we finally want our AI to create. The more diverse and high quality the training data, the better our AI will become at understanding and creating new content. Remember, if we put garbage data in, we'll get garbage data out. Okay, let's hit next. Encoding training data. To make sense of the training data, we need to translate it into a form that the AI can understand. This process is called encoding. We transform text, images, or other data into a series of vectors that the AI can process. These vectors are essentially lists upon lists of numbers. Think of it as translating our data into a language the AI can understand. Let's zoom out here. So in the encoding process, we take the training data and it transforms it into a series of vectors the AI can process, which are really just lists upon lists of numbers. So let's hit next. Creating a probability distribution. Now it's time for the AI to train. During training, the AI looks at the encoded data and learns the underlying structure of the data to be able to generate coherent data. For instance, in the case of text-based models, the training phase involves learning about word associations and co-occurrence patterns. The AI calculates the likelihood of different outcomes to create a probability distribution. The AI starts doing math to calculate what is the probability of A occurring given B has already occurred. This is commonly represented by mathematical symbols like this here. Depending on the type of tasks the algorithm needs to perform, the AI might start doing more complex math and asking more complex questions. It might start calculating what is the probability of A occurring given B, C, and D have already occurred. The probability distribution provides a complete description of the probabilities of all possible occurrences and keeps track of the relative likelihoods of each possible outcome. The probability distribution helps the AI generate new content by choosing the most likely options. So in the training, the AI starts doing this calculation, which is asking what's the probability of A occurring given B has already occurred. And it can do this given multiple probabilities. This probability distribution provides a complete description of the probabilities of all possible occurrences. And that's what's happening here. After the encoding, it takes our training data, encodes it into readable language AI can use, and then it trains upon that data. Next, extra learning and filtering. AI can also be trained and learn in other ways. AI can benefit from feedback and unsupervised learning. Initial versions of ChatGPT use reinforcement learning and human feedback to do additional training. 
Reinforcement learning is a method that involves a rubric that rewards or penalizes the algorithm depending on the correctness of the guess. By iterative training, the AI will eventually learn to generate the correct output for the relevant task. Sometimes a human in the loop is needed to test the outputs too. Many of these models involve human feedback to make sure the content generated is coherent and free of errors. It might also be necessary to remove harmful or incorrect connections the AI built from training data. It's possible that the training data had harmful biases, incorrect data, or other issues. Humans can flag these issues and try to remove these associations so they don't show up in the AI's eventual output. After enough human intervention, they might feel comfortable relying more on unsupervised learning. This allows the AI to create more connections on its own without human intervention. Later versions of GPT use this method. After this step, we've created a complete model that we can start using. Zoom out. And again, after it trains on some of that training data, it does also receive additional feedback from humans. And as it says, it might be necessary through these iterative training sessions that removing harmful or incorrect connections or biases are removed. But then the question is, who is to say what should be removed? And in so doing, are you being biased and therefore creating a more biased AI? So this is where ethics comes into play. And it's a huge thing right now going on in the world of AI and it's just something to keep in mind. Let's go next. User input. To generate content, ChatGPT needs our input. Once we provide a prompt or question, ChatGPT encodes our input just like it did with the training data. This helps ChatGPT understand our request and generate a suitable response. So here's the user interface and user input is what is ChatGPT. The live implementation begins. It takes what is ChatGPT encodes it and then continues on with the probability training and finally giving us a response. Let's go next. Generating content. With your input encoded, ChatGPT uses the powerful GPT version architecture to generate content. Previous models include GPT-1, GPT-2, GPT-3. ChatGPT uses the knowledge it has gained from its training data to generate a response. It achieves this by predicting the most likely sequences of words, phrases, or sentences that would form a suitable reply. ChatGPT bases this on the patterns and relationships it has learned from the vast amount of text data it has been trained on. Sometimes ChatGPT might not form a suitable reply. Sometimes generative AI can hallucinate i.e. generate new but inaccurate content. When talking about generative AI, this can be a situation where the AI produces outputs that may not be accurate, factual, or relevant. Sometimes it might not even make sense. This can happen for a few reasons. Ambiguity in the input. If the user input is vague or unclear, ChatGPT might struggle to generate a relevant response, causing it to create content that appears to be a hallucination. Lack of specific knowledge. If ChatGPT hasn't encountered enough relevant information about a specific topic, it might fill in gaps with incorrect or unrelated details. Limitations of the model. Although GPT version that you're using is a powerful AI model, it's not perfect. It may not always generate accurate, factually correct, or contextually appropriate responses, leading to hallucinations in some cases. ChatGPT is a powerful tool, but it's important to remember that even it can make mistakes. We should always double check any data it gives us. And there's that full picture that we saw earlier. Let's hit next. Decoding and outputting content. Once a generative model generates content, we need to transform it back into something the user can understand. This process is called decoding. The AI takes the encoded vectors and converts them into text, images, or other forms of output. To the user, this whole process happens very quickly. This is because the generative model is created ahead of time, so the user only has to wait for, one, their input to be encoded, two, content to be generated from an existing model, and three, the output to be decoded and sent. Next, review. We've learned a lot about generative AI. Let's review the process. One, it collects training data. So we give our AI training data. It's able to take this 
training data and it encodes it so that the AI can read it. So it takes training data, converts it into readable form so that the AI can read it. It then trains and creates probability distribution based on all that training data. We then also do extra learning and filtering um, with reinforcement learning or unsupervised learning. So this could be with, with humans doing reinforcement learning. We also heard it's able to um, remove any biases that it might come up with. So we're able to do that as well. We then could collect and encode user input. So we could then take what is chat GPT and generate some content with it by kind of using those same processes, right? It encodes it so that the AI can read it. It then will do content generation by responding um, based on all these probability distribution of the training data that it has, um, taking your question or your prompt into consideration. Once it does that, it does generate the content and then that content that generates is decoded and outputted so that we can see it in in plain English um, or whatever your language is. With this knowledge, you're ready to explore generative AI tools with a better understanding of how they work. Again, in this lesson, we kind of are just diving deeper into what generative AI is and how it works. And I mean, like it said here, the most important things is just knowing that uh, it's, it's trained on a bunch of data. Um, how is it trained on that data? Well, it takes massive data sets. It encodes it into a language that the AI can translate and read. And then it trains on that data. Um, and then additional extra learning and filtering is given. And then once that's done, it's able to collect our user input. We can ask it questions and it will look through that data that it's already trained on and it's able to generate content back to us that is decoded and outputted so that we could read it in our plain language. As long as you're understanding that, you guys are getting this section and I'll see you in the next one.